All right, so we're hopping right into this review of the Psych Cheetah electric bike. So this bike has a price of $24.99, $2,499. Oh, and right before I posted this video, I noticed that they are offering $500 off of the bike. So the price right now is $2,000 and they are offering a 10% off discount code for my viewers. So just put in Soldier Knows Best in the coupon code. And now this will bring the bike price all the way down to around $1,800. And this bike is a hunting focused bike. So you, of course you can ride this anywhere, but this bike has some things about it that does make it really good for going off-road, going in different terrain that you might want to use this if you are hunting and stuff or just riding on your farm or doing what I'm doing right now. Now the motor that I have on this bike is a 750 watt Suto motor, but according to the company's website, it says it's a, supposed to be a Bafang motor. So I will reach out to see exactly what's going on there, but I have a Suto motor, um, but this motor it definitely has enough power uh, according to the bike's display, I peak out at around 1200 watts. So brand name aside, this bike has the power to be able to get me over rough terrain, up and down hills with no problem. And this is a pretty beefy bike. It comes in around 94, 95 pounds. So it has some weight to it. It's an aluminum alloy frame, very nice and tough and durable. And this comes in two different colors. You have this desert camo, which I think is going to be very popular with hunters, but it also comes in this space gray version that I have here. And let me split the gap here. Oh yeah, I like doing that. But anyway, the total weight that this bike can support, I believe is 450 pounds. And the really nice and beefy rear rack on this bike can support up to 55 pounds. So again, if you are carrying maybe some game meat that you might've caught out there, you broke it down and you wanna take it home with you, this rear rack will be able to accommodate that. Um, and also if you just weigh a lot, this bike can also handle that as well. All right, so I'm gonna get a little risky here, but this is a hunting bike. So I wanna take this thing in some good off-roading conditions, going down a nice little hill here and let's see if we can Oh, I don't have the gears, <laughs> but I said it was able to make it up. I wasn't in a low gear at all. All right. So anyway, I'm in a low gear now and I am in some thick brush and this thing is handling pretty well. So we have 26 by four inch fat tires on this thing. So big old fat tires. If you are going to be doing a lot of off-roading, you might want to upgrade your tires and stuff, but I'm getting through this thick grass with relatively no problem. And the motor is giving me enough power to make it feel like I'm not having to work that hard. As far as like the riding position with this bike though, I am sitting a little bit forward and I kind of like this position when I am off-roading. I feel a little bit more forward, feel a little bit more in a position to take on whatever terrain I'm about to be going on. So overall, you can see that it's cutting through this grass. And some other things I like about the design of this bike is that the actual derailleur does have this metal plate that does help protect it, which is really nice to have. And another thing is that the controller for this bike, which is kind of like the brains for it, um, is actually sitting up higher than you would typically find on an e-bike where they typically keep them kind of low. And the reason for this is that this is going to help keep it cooled off with the air being able to access it a little bit easier than if it was at the very bottom of the bike. And so like any electronics, the hotter it gets, the less optimal it is going to perform. All right, so I need to land my drone here, but I just got done doing some off-roading. But yeah, that derailleur is going to be nice and protected with this metal plate. And also, I forgot to mention, you have a pretty nice little chain guard here that's on the frame of the bike because the chain does have a potential to be able to do that when you are going over rough terrain. But this will help keep your paint job nice and intact. And look at that. Picked up a little flower on the way. <laughs> And just looking around this bike, you do have a couple of places to be able to attach different things like bike locks or water bottles right in the middle of the frame of this bike. And also you do have plastic fenders protecting both the front and rear tires. Cable management on this bike is solid as well. You do have some internal routing where the cable is actually going to be going inside of the frame of the bike, which makes for a very nice appearance. On the front, you do have a 40 Lux headlight, nice and bright. It's small, but it gets the job done. And on the back, you will find a brake light and you don't have any turn signals on this bike, which isn't really a big deal if you are gonna be taking this outside hunting and stuff. But if you do wanna ride this in the road, just be aware of that. Now this bike only has a front suspension. This is a RST branded front suspension, really nice brand. It does have 80 millimeters of travel and the suspension can be locked out as well just by twisting this knob. And so the front suspension is good, but not having a rear suspension on a bike that's kind of meant for off-roading and stuff is a miss in my opinion especially for the price so i would like to see some type of rear suspension whether it's built into the frame or actually a suspension seat post but the good thing is that the seat that comes with this bike is actually one of the better ones that i've tried recently it's wide it has some comfort to it, it has some padding 
and that does help with the lack of a rear suspension. But for me personally, I would probably put a suspension seat post on this thing if I do plan on riding it um, in rough terrain a lot. And oh, if you do get caught out in the rain or something, this bike does have a rating of IPX5. It's fine if you're riding in the rain, just don't leave it outside overnight um, in rain because that's not good for any bike, but it's good if you occasionally get caught in some water. And one minor thing about the seat post is that it doesn't use a quick release to be able to raise and lower it. So that's not really a big deal if you don't plan on sharing this bike a lot, but if you do plan on sharing it, just make sure you bring the little tool to be able to loosen it up and adjust it. But the good thing about the way it is set up is that this thing is rock solid. It's not gonna be going anywhere if you are gonna be hitting a lot of bumps. Now the battery on this bike is a 48 volt, 20 amp hour, 960 watt hour battery. And this bike does come with a couple of keys that will allow you to easily take this battery out and it drops from the uh, middle of the frame and then now you can take it aside and charge it if you want or you can always leave it on the bike and charge it that way but this battery is rated to get you up to 80 miles but that's using pedal assist now this bike does have three different riding modes so you have your eco mode which is going to be the most efficient to get the longest range and then you have your sport mode that's right there in the middle for balance of power and range and then you also have the boost mode which is going to be giving you the maximum power but will be decreasing your overall range but in the bike manual that you can see online it's very convenient that the company did make this little graph to give you a really good idea as far as like how much range you can get and also the top speeds for each individual mode and so i like that they took the time to be able to lay this all out for you and i'm going through some thick brush right here but this motor is powering through it um, but yeah you do have some zoom branded handlebars on this the handlebar grips are rubber and also locked in place as well. So they're not going to be twisting around on you. So that's nice. And then on the left hand side, you will find the thumb throttle, which you typically find on the right hand side, but no big deal. And next to that, you'll find the vice controls to be able to go up and down the pedal assist, turn the flashlight on, go to the menu settings and all that stuff. And that, of course, controls the big colorful display here on this bike. Gives you a lot of information right from the get go as far as your mileage and also the battery voltage. And also it does give you a bar to see the remaining battery life and as i mentioned before it does show you the wattage that's being put out by this bike and also you do get the time on this thing uh, but you can go into the settings so you can see just even more detail about how long you've been riding in certain pedal assist levels and also you can get into the settings and add a passcode lock on this bike if you wanted to as well and to give you even more control you can connect to this bike via bluetooth by using the psych assistant app that you can download on your phone so this will allow you to control some of those same settings that you can do on the bike but also you can get information as far as like different error codes and also so if you do need help uh, with maintenance or warranty claims and stuff like that, you can get a lot of information in the app that way. One thing I would like to see in this app though is some navigational directions built in. So you'll be able to track your trip information with that, but that's no big deal. But overall the app uh, performed pretty well. All right, so I like riding next to trains, but yeah, anyway, on the right-hand side of the handlebars, you will find the controls for the eight-speed Shimano shifter here. Very nice paddle controls for that. And also you will find this uh, physical bell as well. Okay, so let's jump into the speed test here for this Cheetah bike here. So I do have it in the boost mode. You also have eco and sports modes to choose from. That's gonna just basically decrease the power that you're getting from this bike um, if you're not in the ultimate boost mode, which I've been leaving it in for uh, this entire video. So anyway, first test will be throttle only. So let's get this thing going in three, two, one, boom. And all right, take off is not too bad. We're already at 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20 miles per hour so this bike even though it is a class 3 electric bike it does limit me um, out of the box at 20 miles per hour when i am just using throttle only so let's go ahead and switch over to using pedal assist and let me increase the gears here and you can see we moving so we're already at 26 27 28 yeah 28.6 miles per hour my gps app on my phone i'm hitting 28.2.3 all right and the good thing about the boost mode is that it does get you up to that 28 miles per hour when you are using pedal assist pretty quickly now let's test out the hydraulic disc brakes Okay, so yeah, the brakes on this bike are pretty solid. I did get some squeaking from the front brake from time to time. I probably need to, you know, clean off the uh, front disc brake pads or something. But yeah, other than that, the braking is very solid on this bike. All right, so as you can see, this bike isn't going to be the high speed roaster type of bike where you can just hold down that throttle and get the maximum speed all the time. But I will say that this bike is, again, made for hunting and stuff where you probably want to be using that pedal assist to maybe hopefully extend your battery range. All right, so now for my typical hill test, really nice steep hill, just throttle 
only in three, two, one, boom. Here we go. So the throttle takes like sometimes like a half second for it to kind of kick in, but we are off to the races here, kind of. <laughs> We're at like nine, 10 miles per hour. Got some metal plates here. Very common in St. Louis, but we're up to 12, 13 miles per hour going up that hill. So not bad. Not the best I've seen on this hill, but definitely not bad. And so look, I personally want to be able to get up to 28 miles per hour using the throttle only, but you have to remember this bike is kind of targeted for people who are gonna be off-roading and stuff. So you might not be going over 20 miles per hour if you are in rough terrain and stuff. But the fact that the pedaling is really good on this bike as far as allowing you to get up to that 28 miles per hour without having to work that hard because of the, uh, the output of the motor, that helps a little bit with the lack of power with the throttle. But this is a $2,500 e-bike though. And at this price range, I would like to see a torque sensor when it comes to the pedaling you just get a uh, you know standard cadence sensor with this which is not bad you don't have a lot of delay when it comes to pedaling and when the motor kicks in it's literally just one rotation but at this price range i would like to see a little bit of those extras but even with all that being said all those other different positives that i've said about this bike with the design the elements and just that that raw power that you do get from it um this is a really good solid overall bike and this is my first bike that i've reviewed from this company so i'm looking forward to seeing what other bikes they have and the type of performance that you can get from this but if you are interested in it check out that link down below in the description of this video and also drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about this bike. But like always, I do want to thank you for watching this video and I will catch you later. Peace.